so let's talk about a really important aspect around biosolids, that's communications. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a big issue these days. Why is communicating about biosolids so important? I think a lot of it is because for so long, especially in this industry, biosolids was the arrow off the map. Hmm. It was the thing that you just discarded, not even just at home, but in the industry, you can look at charts, we've all seen them, and there's just an arrow going off the map. <laughs> and it's not going nowhere, it's going somewhere. And we need to recognize that and really maximize the potential of biosolids and know, connect people to that so that they know that they're a part of it. So a lot of, a lot of commu people in communities don't realize that this resource is out there, right. that it's being used, that it's helping their local farms, their local gardens you know, helping fight climate change, all those benefits. They're not aware of it. Right. Uh, and then there's also some questions out there about biosolids and, you know, what might be in them and all that. So that's why this communications is important. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the, the funny thing about biosolids is that it's always, to me, felt like an underdog in the recovered resource suite because you have reclaimed water, you have energy recovery, and then you have biosolids that a lot of people don't want to talk about. And it's something that is... Bond, bonds us all, mm. right? It, everybody does it. It's something that can be a common ground for us, and we really need to maximize that and talk about it that way. I also think that um, with communication and biosolids, that little symbiotic relationship, is that we need to talk about it in a way that makes it personal. It makes it not so, um, so much of a mystique, mm. you know? It's something that we all do. It's something that is part of our circular resource economy and how do we really make sure that that's personal and connect it to people. The other part of it is that we are poised to talk about it. Mm. This is something that biosolids is, is that tool that we need to fertilize, to have you know, local fertilizer. We have local fertilizer everywhere. If you're in a community, you make biosolids. So why not maximize that and really bring that to those communities? And it's something that we need to be more proactive about, not hiding under the radar, but being a voice for biosolids. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned kind of that circularity, right? And mm -hmm. the resource recovery piece. And I think that, uh, if I may weigh in. Yes, I, please. I, I, I think, I think <laughs> that the, the, the opportunity for communications is because there's so many more people that are concerned about sustainability right now, about reusing, you know, reuse, reduce, recycle kind of thing. And so this is a winning, a winning formula here with biosolids. It's like this is, this is totally regenerative and something that needs to happen. Yeah. So there's some specific initiatives going on with yes. LEF uh, that I want to talk about. Uh -huh. uh, let's talk about the year of poo. Let's uh, talk about uh, it. So <laughs> <laughs> what, what is this? You, you started mm. at WEF and you came in right away with like, we've got to talk about things different. We've got to do yeah. some different kind of campaigns. So what is year of poo? Yeah, so Year of Poo is a social engagement. We like to call it a flusher engagement campaign um, to really broaden awareness about what it is that we all do, but also what we all create. We're producers. Hmm. You know, we consume, but we also produce. And the wastewater treatment plants and the water resource recovery facilities are really the refineries. They're the ones who are making curating those products, but we're really the producers. So how do we really move further up the pipe and connect to those flushers? And I really appreciated the keynote session today because she was really talking about social media and how it was underground and people don't really understand it. Same can be said about the flush, ah, same thing. Yeah, and so some of the elements you have with mm -hmm. Year of Poo, you, you've got a website, people yeah. can go to this. What's the what's 2022 the web? Year of Poo, okay. you can go there. And really the idea of it was to make it Make it kind of something that was intriguing. Yeah. Make it fun, make it humorous, but also have those message points that you can say, and by the way, did you know there's this giant fatberg in London, and please don't flush your wipes, mm, and right. please don't flush your grease. You know, so making it fun, making it a connection, but also bringing people into the story, because this is a fascinating story to tell. Yeah. So fun fecal facts, we have those there every week. We also, every Friday, have a Friday flush. So we have an interview that we do with people in, in our sector, outside of our sector, featuring why they have 
in their career some way that poo is involved mm. and how they made poo a part of their repertoire. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun with we the We do puns. have a lot there of fun. There are a lot of puns that can go with this. And I think also it's important for people to know that this is not going to just be 20, <clears throat> 2022 right. and done. Like yes. poo and you yes. is kind of, you know, the overarching umbrella. This is going to continue because WEF feels it's important to talk to different audiences uh, and, and educate them this way. Absolutely, and I think it's been a, gr you know, there's growing pains in all things that are new, right? And I think one of the greatest things about the WEF's new strategic plan is that being bold and doing things different is something that is now written into our code. Mm. And I love it, because that is exactly what 2022 Year of Poo is, and the future campaigns that will come out of Poo and You. Yeah. So we're, we're here in October, uh, and I think there's something exciting that's going to be happening in yes. November. Yeah. Another, another different way to reach out to the public about biosolids and their benefits. What's, yeah. uh, what's happening in November? So in November, we have partnered with PBS Viewpoint, uh, and uh, the host is Dennis Quaid, who many probably know that name. Um, he is the host of it, and these are short little snippets that are typically about industry or about companies. Um, but really what we wanted to do is kind of flip that a little bit. We wanted to flip that narrative and say, you know, WEF is wonderful, we love WEF, we know WEF, but let's make it more about biosolids and the story of biosolids and really elevate that story. So we did film a PBS special feature for biosolids that will be coming out in November. We were so excited. And um, it features, um, you know, uh, the, the water resource recovery facility. It features gardeners. Uh, farmers and um, nonprofits that are protecting ocean resources, um, WEF as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a really nice um, story to tell and to get it out into the world beyond our echo chamber. Yeah, and so that will air in like a hundred markets around yes. the country. So yeah. hopefully people can see that that way. But also we will be able to feature it on our website, uh, yeah. WEF.org. So if people don't catch it watching PBS, they can definitely come see this five to six minute special. Yeah. And it's really aimed at the public on it explaining totally what these are, why they're beneficial. Right. Um, and let me ask you, What's the, what's the call to action there? You know, mm -hmm. if people learn, oh, this is what biosolids are, oh, they're good for all these reasons, what should people do then? You know, I think, and you were there, cause, and, and I think that this story tells it great. The production crew that was there with us, touring the DC water plant, they coming in were apprehensive. They had no idea where they were and what they were gonna see, and they looked a little nervous. But as <laughs> they went through the tour, right, yeah. their eyes just like, Brightened, they're like, I had no idea it was this scale. I didn't know this is what happened. So the call to action is find out what happens yeah. after you flush and own it. A lot of this is moving beyond just communication. It's about engagement yeah. and making that connection to people really real and really something that resonates with them. So find out where it goes. What do they do with it in your community? Yeah. And support the programs to make sure that they can sustain and that as long as you flush, this is going to keep happening. Right, right. Um, just, to, just to divert our conversation a yeah. little bit on that point, if we stop reusing biosolids in these beneficial ways, on farms, on gardens, on reclaimed land, you know, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. what happens then? This is the thing, right? Um, this, as long as it flushes, it's always going to be there. There's 5.8 million dry tons in the United States alone. 5.8 million, And yes. we estimate that you, us, personally contribute about 37 pounds a year mm. uh, to that total. So this is not something that is a drop in the bucket, mm. right? <laughs> it's like actually significant. So the other alternatives are landfilling, which we know is not sustainable. Those are filling up. And incineration is mm -hmm. another option, but people now are, those regulations are getting more strict as well. So we need to figure out a way to make this sustainable. Make it not just sustainable, but something that communities thrive and care about mm -hmm. and want to have. Yeah. In uh, another piece that WEF put out um, a little bit ago, but is out there, is a biosolids communications toolkit. Right. What is this? Who should use it? So the idea behind the toolkit was to really take all the knowledge from the sector and say what has worked when you communicate, what hasn't worked, what ideas do you have, is there a template that you can just give us to you know, kind of curate for our agency. So it's really kind of a boiler template 
of ideas, but also, you know, templates that you can just use out of your agency and, and best practices and case studies. So really trying to give the, the, you know, the water utilities, wastewater utilities, a tool that they can use to really know how, what the message points should be. Mm. How should we talk human about this? Mm. That's the other part of it is, you know, our language, we can talk together and it makes sense, but when you're talking to just <laughs> people in your community, when you say, say biosolids, right. the switch kind of goes off. Right. So how do you talk to them in a way that actually wants them to be engaged and want to like lean in and learn more? Yeah. So message, messaging and how to do that, but also how to really um, engage people and, and have tools for your agency to use. Yeah, I, I think you know, utilities are, come in all sizes and uh, you know, communication staffs are often not the largest or most resourced. And so I, this is meant to be a great off the shelf kind of kit that you can use, like plug and play, as right. they say. It's got messages, it's got the language, it has a game plan, it has, hey, don't be overwhelmed with all the things you should do, start right here. Uh, and that was really the intent, was to get that out there and have folks use it. Um, I want to ask you a little bit more about utilities and hesitancy to communicate mm. around biosolids. Mm -hmm. um, how would you assess kind of that landscape right now? Yeah. I think it's. I think it's getting better. Okay. I do. I do. I have hope. I'm an optimist, so I have hope. There, it, there was a time, as I mentioned, where it was kind of the arrow off the map, and everybody was okay with that as long as it just went away. There's even, you know, people who say dispose, and you know, that's something that is is not vernacular that we want to like mm. move to because we really want to talk about this in a way that you are creating something really powerful. And how cool is that? That you can make a resource that communities can use. That we can protect our soil, that mm. we can sequester carbon, that we can grow crops. So I think that it's becoming an easier conversation to have, but it is still people coming out of their shell a little bit mm. about it. Mm. And people, you know, biosolids are a target often sure. for, and we've seen this um, play out with PFAS, um, with biosolids kind of being the target. It's, it's a thing that people kind of shy away from, mm. but I think being more vocal and telling our stories about it and really connecting to people on how they're involved in that cycle as well. I think uh, whenever utilities can open their doors and bring in yes. members of the public mm -hmm. and show you know, the process of, of creating biosolids, it uh, makes it so much more real and tangible and understandable. Uh, it's fascinating, it's yeah. impressive, it's amazing. Uh, I mean, we, we saw inside DC Water, which is a big giant utility yeah. and they have an incredible operation, but uh, it's, it just, it unlocks the mystique and shows totally. what, how valuable these are. I completely agree. And a huge shout out to our water resource recovery facility folks. They give these tours and it is like, they beam with pride. Mm. They're so proud. I just got the tour of Milorganite and it was like the chocolate factory golden <laughs> ticket tour. I was so excited. Um, but they are so proud about what they do. And when people see that the end product is not what you flushed, it's actually a curated, treated resource, it totally, it makes it, makes it more visual and, and more, brings it home sure. to what it really is. And so people that want to learn more information from WEF about biosolids, mm -hmm. that want to find some of these resources, what are the best sites for them to go to? Yeah, so we have um, WEF.org slash biosolids. We also will have a PBS specific um, site that that will also be on the WEF.org slash biosolids. But okay. we'll, um, we'll have that up soon once we have the, the videos out. And also the PBS special, we want that to be used by members. Very good point. Yeah. When, when that comes out, we will be reaching out to our members right. and saying, hey, this is out there, these video segments, here's the toolkit, here's some suggestions on how you can use this in your public education. So, yeah. Miley, thank you very much. Mahalo. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, and thank you all for watching WEF Tech Live.